Holy buckets, here it is. It is in its brand new, beautiful binder. This is the Fan Clan Master Set of Temporal Forces. Look at how good this looks. Oh my goodness. Uh, this belongs to one of you. One of you gets to win this entire Master Set. And if you want to be the winner, here's what you have to do. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. So scroll down, hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed. And then leave a like and a comment on this video right up here. Now don't do it right now. Wait till the end of this video. But go back, watch this video, leave a like and a comment on this video. And then boom. You're entered. Come back on April 5th, Friday, April 5th. That's when we are going to announce the winner at the beginning of the video. Good luck. Finish this sentence for me. Uh, Temporal Forces is the most interesting set since blank. Uh, I'm very, very curious. To me, Temporal Forces is the most interesting set we've had uh, since Evolving Skies. I have no idea what's going on with this set. I really, really don't. Uh, pull rates are well documented all over the place, so... I can rest at ease. I thought maybe I opened like 2,000 packs of just really bad luck and that's why I had terrible pull rates and here I am telling you guys to be careful with how much you're spending when it comes to opening product. Wait a while, don't FOMO, just go back to Paldean Fates uh, because Temporal Forces has just been absolutely nuts. Obviously, pull rates, not nearly what we were what we were expecting. I was looking at like Paldea Evolve pull rates the other day just to kind of get a feel. And it's like Paldea Evolve, you got 1.7 uh, special illustration rares per box, like 1.7. That's how far we have uh, changed. Like 1.7 is insane. And now it's like 40% of the boxes of Temporal Forces don't have any. They have no special illustration rare. They have no hyper rare. And it's just, it's very crazy. And then you look at the market for Temporal Forces singles. And this is, this is so important right now. Don't FOMO, don't spend, don't overbuy, don't do anything like that because people talk about uh, pull rates and how bad they are and how, how you might want to buy singles on the set, which is very, very true, very accurate. But I think the most important thing is, if there's one thing you're going to take out of the video, it's this. Uh, scarcity does not exist with modern Pokemon. It just does not. And this is my opinion. You can feel free to disagree. You can say, Fanny, I love you, but uh, dude, you're wrong. Scarcity does exist with modern Pokemon. At least when it comes to main series sets, I don't believe it. I don't believe scarcity exists. I think there's going to be plenty of pulls. I think there's going to be plenty of hits. I think there's going to be plenty of cards on the secondary market. Even a card like Umbreon VMAX, for example, which has way harder pull rates than all of these special illustration rares. Uh, and while it's a very expensive card because demand is so high, you look at how many cards of Umbreon VMAX, how many copies of that Moonbreon exist. I mean, you're looking at over 10,000 of them just graded in PSA 10. 10,000 of them just graded in PSA 10, which is an insane number when you think about how many packs that equates to, how many packs it takes to open up a singular Umbreon VMAX. So there is going to be, demand is different now, right? Supply is different now, demand is different now. And even though we probably have less Temporal Forces printed than what we had of Evolving Skies, there's still plenty of it out there. Don't let anybody fool you with this whole short print talk. There's still going to be plenty out there. There's still going to meet demand. And we are going to have Temporal Forces in the form format for a very long time where you're looking at a couple of years yet where it's still going to be in competitive play so it's still going to be thrown into every collection box and every tin all over the place people are going to continue to crack packs there's going to be more special illustration rares hitting the market there's going to be more illustration rares hitting the market so once things balance out a little bit once you can start analyzing trends a little bit and you don't have this volatility that we really have right now with temporal forces that's when you start making your decisions on buying cards maybe right now just be like okay i'm going to buy some of these lesser expensive cards maybe fill up my regular arts in this binder maybe get a couple of the cheaper hyper rares maybe get a few of the cheaper illustration rares i'm not going to worry about that ghastly i'm not going to worry about that iron crown i'm not going to worry about that raging bolt because right now prices are all over the place including a specs which have a pull rate of two per box some of those a specs part of the reason behind that is uncertainty we have no idea what's going to happen with the competitive format with rotation just literally hitting now in the next main series event the next main event not happening for uh until next weekend at the e UIC, the European International Championships, we don't know how A specs are going to be. But the big thing is, A specs are limited to only one copy per deck. So you can only use one A spec. It doesn't matter if it's Maximum Belt. It doesn't matter if it's Neo Upper Energy. It doesn't matter if it's Prime Catcher. You can only use one copy of an A spec 
in your entire deck. And then what happens if during the next set, a better ace spec comes out? So uh, it's very, very important. I probably ranted way too long on that, but it's very important as we look at these numbers that you chill, that you just relax. Make the best decision with your collecting budget. That's really the best thing that you can do. In case you were wondering, we're talking about Temporal Forces in today's video. Wow, did I do bad at explaining that. Uh, Temporal Forces uh, has been out a week. So like every set, we are going to look at how singles have performed over the past week. And a lot of times, historically, and the reason that Temporal Forces is such an outlier and so interesting is because a lot of times you're seeing 60, 70% drops after a week of release. And I think that really started, really hit hard with battle styles. And then after that, a lot of hype kind of built up about a set and then tons of product got opened. A lot of product got listed on the secondary market on sites like TCG Player, on eBay, on Amazon, all over the place. And then product came crazy crashing down. A lot of those singles came crashing down as more and more people started buying. It was a race to the bottom. Uh, Temporal Force is a little different. You still have 60% drops in some areas. However, a lot of cards, some of those cards that are a little bit tougher to pull, have really started to rise in price and started to climb in price. And I don't know the exact reasoning behind it. There's a lot of theories behind it. I don't know the exact reasoning behind it. I think part of the reason behind it is because there is less supply, because less people are cracking boxes than what they were in the past, because people looked at the pull rates, saw that they were rough, and maybe they are focusing more on buying singles, but that's why you want to be patient. So we look at this pretty much every single set release a week after a set releases. We take screenshots on the morning of release to get a feel for where market prices have been established during the release of a new set. So on TCG Player, you can put up singles uh, at, on Friday morning. Like anybody can put up singles on Friday morning. The only people who can put up singles before Friday morning are uh, authorized brick and mortar stores who run pre, pre-release events. They are authorized by uh, Pokemon to do pre-order uh, pre-releases. So uh, TCG Player makes you send in paperwork, makes you fill out a, a form, and you have to verify the fact that you are a pre-order store. So uh, the market doesn't really get established until Friday morning. So we take screenshots of the singles, and then we analyze them about a week later. And this is probably uh, the second to last Temporal Vor Forces video that we will record for a while. We'll have another video next week where we go over the fun costs and things like that of opening up Temporal Forces. But I'm going to flip you guys around and stop rambling so you can see exactly what we're talking about. But I kind of want to throw a lot of information out there and you can let me know uh, in the comment section down below what you think so we're going to start out looking at the majority of the special illustration rares because those are the ones that have really made the most noise right like special illustration rares we talked about this before nowhere near the pull rates that we were getting with a set like Paldea Evolved Scarlet and Violet has gotten uh, a little bit worse every single set release every single set release pull rates have gone a little bit backwards and I thought it was really just in my mind but they really are going a little bit backwards and traditionally Pokemon has maintained pull rates pretty much throughout an entire generation. So it's very interesting to see them making adjustments as we go throughout Scarlet and Violet. Now, the big thing to remember is even though pull rates are worse than what we're used to in Scarlet and Violet, they're still leaps and bounds better than what we experienced in Black and White, in Sun and Moon, in X and Y. I know a lot of people are like, oh, pull rates are terrible. You're still getting 13, 12, 14 hits in a booster box, which is absolutely insane. Back in X, Y days, uh, or Black and White days, you would get like four. Uh, X and Y days, you would get like five. Uh, Sun and Moon days, you would get like six. If you opened up a booster box with seven hits during the Sun and Moon era, it was like, it was crazy. Like you lost your mind because it was so good. So we're still way ahead of that. Uh, but some of these upper echelon rarities Definitely a lot different. Looking at the Iron Leaves EX, this one started out as the most expensive special illustration rare. And this one, um, this one actually has gone down. So a few of the special illustration rares have actually fallen down a little bit. Not as much as what we're traditionally used to when it comes to the special illustration rares. But this does make sense with a little bit harder pull rates. It is going to take a little bit more time uh, for these to fall a little bit. Now, I pulled this data a couple nights ago and I didn't make any adjustments, even though there's a lot of volatility going on right now, with the exception of Gengar. Gengar, I did change and updated the price right before I recorded this because that card is all over the place. But you can see Iron Leaves EX starting out at $76.59 on Friday morning. It dropped about 24% over the past week. So it's sitting at about $58 right now. Should continue to fall down. I don't know if Iron Leaves is really the most competitive card in the world. We'll see what happens over the next week. The Iron Crown EX is extremely competitive. And we're going to talk about what's happening with Iron Hands on uh, Sunday's video. We'll talk about Paradox Rift because that's a whole nother story. But Iron Crown doing extremely well. Has a ton of potential in the competitive format. Which is one of the reasons that it is doing extremely well. You can see the market price there on Friday morning of $57.27. 
27 cents at one time. This jumped up to about $200. Nobody bought it. Now, I think a lot of people did buy Iron Crown EX under the impression that, okay, well, I want to get my copy now before it shoots up. And then once things got a little bit low as far as quantity uh, available on TCG Player, then things started moving a little bit faster. And then a few companies started being like, okay, well, I'm going to buy these now and I'm going to relist them at $200. It's a great thing that the community kind of rallied around and they didn't buy them at that price. They were like, this is ridiculous because there's no way that this card is worth $200. And then it came back down real quick. Now it did drop below $100 recently. It's sitting at $95.75 currently. That's still low, about a 67% gain from where it was on opening day. Uh, if you look at the Bianca's Devotion, this one not doing too bad, uh, not too expensive. It's sitting at $36.64 right now, which is about a 32% drop over its first week. Started out at $53.75. The next one is the Raging Bolt. This one is doing well and well and uh, Raging Bolt not doing too bad as far as like testing goes as well. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how this one performs. This one and Gouging Fire not doing as bad as I thought they would. Uh, market price on this one, $50.25 on opening day. It's actually gone up quite a bit. It's up 50, almost 51% over the first week. $75.75 is where it's currently sitting at. Uh, you can see opening day, 41 listings, uh, about the same amount right now. So very interesting to see how this card performs. Same thing with Gouging Fire, uh, kind of supply and demand equaling out a little bit, or maybe demand or supply really isn't quite hitting demand for this one. $43.83 is where this one started out, but it's starting to climb a little bit. I also think the aesthetics of this card has have a lot of people excited. So a lot of people uh, like the artwork on this card, and maybe people are a little bit worried about something happening, like what happened with Iron Crown. That's why it's so important to be patient. Five months, six months down the road, I know it's not fun to go back and finish Master Set six months down the road because by then you have two more releases that I've already hit. It gets really overwhelming, uh, but it's no different than the whole uh, how do you eat an, an elephant mentality. Just stay organized one bite at a time. That's really all you can do. That's the best way that you're going to be able to afford uh, what can become a very expensive hobby. And then you lose a lot of fun uh, with the hobby. $43.83 is where Gouging Fire started out. It's up about 9.5% from there, sitting at $40, $48 and a penny currently. Morty's Conviction, also not doing too bad. This one's actually dropped a little bit since release, despite the fact that this is a chase card for a lot of people. $43.67 is where this one started. It's dropped about 12.5%. So it's down to $38.25 currently. The Special Illustration or Airy has dropped a little bit harder. This one's down 32.69%. It went from $40.10 down to $26.99. The Walking Wake doing much, much better. Now this one started out on opening day at $37.67. It's jumped up to about $56.60. So that's a little over 50% of a gain, a price hike over the past week. Uh, then we've got some of these full arts here, some of the hyper rares, and these continue to not do well in Scarlet and Violet. So even though the backgrounds look a little bit cooler with the ancient and the future patterns, uh, still not performing well. You can see this Raging Bolt EX, for example, starting out at $31.52. Full art's still fairly easy to pull in the Scarlet and Violet era. This one has dropped 86.5% over the past week. You can buy it for $4.25. And that's not even the worst one yet. Here's the Iron Leaves Hyper Rare. This one started at $27.81. It's dropped about 60%, 59.5% uh, over the past week, down to $11.23. Iron Boulder EX, the special illustration rare, has been relatively flat, but it's lost about 10% over the past week. This seems to be the least popular of the special illustration rares outside of that Salvatore. Uh, $26.44 is where this one started at. It's currently sitting at $23.75, so it's dropped about 10%. Then we've got the Prime Catcher. The Ace Specs are doing so well, uh, partly because of that competitive play uh, theory. I do think that these are going to go down quite a bit over time. I don't know, even during uh, the black and white era, the XY era, a lot of those A specs, with the exception of like computer search, stayed relatively inexpensive, and the pull rates are very similar with about two per booster box. Uh, so Prime Catcher, $25.51. It's currently sitting at $32.38, which is about a 27% gain. When I looked earlier, right before I recorded this video, it was up to about $34, $35. So it's continuing to climb. Uh, a little bit more, especially as we get closer and closer uh, to EUIC. And then the week after that, we have the regional event in Orlando. So there's going to be another major event that happens with these cards legal. People are trying to make sure that they have their decks ready to go. Maybe they have to make a last minute tweak because there's not a whole lot of time uh, between traveling all the way over to the UK and then coming back to the US and then having to fly all the way down to Florida uh, all within the span of a few days. So uh, Iron Crown EX, the hyper rare, you've seen about 36% drop on this one over the past week. $23.64 down to $15.11. Right after that is the Iron Crown double rare 
variant or ultra rare variant, I mean, uh, $20.59. This one also dropped about 35%, so it's down to $13.42. The Gouging Fire EX got hit really hard, about a 73% drop on this one from $20.08 all the way down to $5.40. And then we've got a few hyper rares here that we'll look at, all of them uh, dropping between 35 and 50%. The Walking Wake has dropped 48.34%. This one started out at $19.92. It's fallen to $10.29. I personally like the gold cards. I think they're really cool. I'm glad that they're relatively inexpensive because I really do like them. Uh, Gouging Fire EX, $19.79 is where this started. It's dropped down to single digits already. $9.08. That's about a 54% drop over the past week. Then we've got the Raging Bolt EX, which was at $18.43. This one's dropped a little bit less, about 37%, uh, but it did start a little bit cheaper than the other ones. Currently sitting at $11.60. Uh, Cypher Maniacs Code Breaking. This is also a very good competitive card. So this card maintaining some decent value, even though it's dropped about 41%. Traditionally, uh, full art supporters in the Scarlet and Violet era do not perform very well. Uh, so a week after release to see something that's still in the double digits as far as price goes for a just a normal uh, ultra rare full art supporter, uh, very different than what we're used to. This one fell from $18 down to $10.59. Uh, so about a 41% decrease. It's still doing pretty well though. About $11, $12 right now, even a couple days after I pulled the data. Uh, Walking Wake has dropped 84.6%. So if you're looking for a full art, a cool full art in the set, this might be one that you want to grab up now. Uh, $2.61 is where it's currently sitting. It might drop a little bit more, uh, but I, I, we're just splitting hairs at $2 or $2.61 at that point. The Gengar EX actually doing really well. Only about an 8% drop for this one. Really just a lot of demand for Gengar. It's not going to be very good in competitive play, at least not in the near future. Maybe down the road it will be, uh, but started out at $14.79. It's dropped down to $13.60. Here's that special illustration rare Salvatore that we were talking about before. It's dropped about 22% from $14.56 down to $11.33. It started out inexpensive, uh, still inexpensive, just not a lot of demand for that one. The Iron Boulder Hyper Rare, this one started out $13.69, so it was the cheapest of the Hyper Rares, and it's already dropped almost 50%, 47.5% uh, down to $7.18. The Ultra Rare Aries, so not the special illustration rare, went from $13.34 down to $6.46. That's about a 55.5% drop, which isn't bad for that one. And then we've got the Explorer's Guidance, which also isn't doing too bad. Uh, it's dropped about 45%, but historically, typically, we're seeing 60 to 70% drops. So this one not doing too bad, uh, dropping about 45.37% from 13.29 down to 7.26. Then we've got another A spec, which has seen double digit growth, about 13% growth for maximum belt over the past week, from $13.23 up to $14.97. Uh, the Full Art Iron Leaves EX started out at $12.29. It's lost a little bit more than half its value almost 60 percent uh, down to five dollars and a penny uh the master ball this one not doing quite as well as the other a specs uh only down about 16 percent so not performing badly but it started out at about $12, it's currently sitting at $10.05. Here's the big one when it comes to illustration rares. Uh, Ghastly doing extremely well. It started out at $11.21, got bought up a lot over opening weekend, jumped up about to $30, $35, and then backed off to about $18, $19, and then started climbing again to $22. And the reason I changed it is because it's so much higher again just over the past day. And that's how volatile uh, a new market can be for a new set. $41 is where it's currently sitting. This card is up $265. 0.74%, which is absolutely insane, unheard of uh, in, in a lot of different sets. Very, very interesting to watch the gasoline and how it's performing. The Cincino illustration are also doing really well, but nowhere near uh, as well as the gasoline. This one started at $10.67. It's jumped up to about $13.44, uh, which is about a 26% gain. The Incineroar EX has been destroyed. This one started out at $8.34. It's dropped about 65%, down to $2.89. Uh, the Metagross illustration are not doing too bad. $8.31 is where it started out. It's lost about 36%, so it's sitting at $5 dollars and 30 cents currently the hero's cape a spec is doing extremely well uh this one started out at eight dollars and 19 cents it's gained about 40% over the past week, uh, sitting at 11.48 currently. Uh, then we've got the Iron Crown EX, the regular art, which is doing extremely well uh, right now. And I think part of that is just because people don't know what to expect. So they're kind of buying it so that way they can include it. With that Iron Hands, that's a lot of the, that, this deck is really kind of a, a favorite moving into the EUIC event. So a lot of people need to get their copies of it, which is why the price is stay, staying so strong. Uh, $7.41 is where this card started at, uh, but it's actually grown for a regular 
regular, you don't usually see that opening week. It's up about 28%, up to $9.50 uh, for a regular art, which is really, really strong. The Meltan illustration runner has dropped about 66% and went from $6.43 down to $2.20. Here's what we were talking about before with those full art supporters. Morty's Conviction uh, started out in single digits already at $6.37, and it's actually lost over 50, 54% after that, sitting at $2.91 currently. Uh, the Mencino illustration runner has dropped about 39% from 608 down to 369. The Full Art Torterra has dropped over 57%. Started out relatively inexpensive at $6.08, but it's all the way down to $2.60 currently. Uh, the illustration runner Snom went from 602 down to 318. That's about a 47% drop. Uh, then we've got Puff the Magic Drample, which didn't start out too high at $5.58. It has lost about 34.5%, so it's sitting at 365 currently. The Salvatore Full Art, already basically below bulk pricing, uh, went from $5.50 on opening day. It's dropped about 64.5% since then, down to $1.95. The Deerling, the Deerling and the Saws Buck in this set look absolutely sublime. I love the aesthetics of them. $5.45 is where this one started. Uh, not doing too bad. It's about 26%, uh, 25.5% of a drop, down to $4.05. Uh, then we've got the Bianca's Devotion, much like what we saw from the Morty's Conviction. Uh, this card's very, very inexpensive. $5.39. It's dropped about 38.59%, but it started out relatively inexpensive. So it's only a $3.31 card right now, which is very interesting. The Reboot Pod A Spec, not nearly doing as well as the other A Specs. Went from $5.29 down to $3.35. So it's about 36.5% drop on that one. Scizor EX, the full art, started out relatively cheap at $5.27. It's lost a little bit over half of its value, sitting at $2.49 currently. Then we've got the Illustration Rare Litton, which has been very flat opening week. It's only dropped about 5% from $5.22 down to $4.95. The Arbok, really the same thing from $5.03 down to $4.73. That's actually a really cool card. Uh, the Excadrill has lost about half of its value. Uh, $4.96 down to $2.43. And that's the last one that we're looking at. So very interesting to kind of look and see how these cards are performing opening week really gives you an idea of uh, the best time to kind of pull the trigger. And this is a set where you really just kind of want to wait it out. Just kind of wait out. Uh, there's a lot of volatility going on. A lot of things happening going on right now. And the best thing to do is just kind of absorb it, watch it, see it happen, but don't make any decisions based off of emotions or anything like that. There's a lot going on with temporal forces, I think. Uh, so I would just kind of let people open it. Let people open it, enjoy it, have fun. Uh, maybe open up a little yourself, but don't go crazy on it because pull rates are really tough in the set. Maybe buy a few blisters here and there, a, fingal, uh, a few single pack boosters, test your luck, see how it goes. Maybe you'll pull a special illustration or maybe you'll pull that ghastly and then you don't have to worry about checking the, that one off the list, but don't go nuts on it. Wait for things to balance out and then make a better educated decision after the, the, the market uh, steadies a little bit, especially after we've had a couple of competitive events under our belt so we see how these cards perform. Iron Crown could do terrible. It could do really, I don't think it will, but it could do really bad and then all of a sudden, uh, if you look at like Roaring Moon, for example, Roaring Moon was expected to do extremely well and it didn't do well. It took a while for it to start doing better in the competitive format. Uh, so after Paradox Rift released, uh, Roaring Moon shot up all over the place. And then a couple weeks later, Roaring Moon uh, was much, much cheaper. And, and then it started climbing again because then it started performing better, but it didn't do well at first. And that could happen with Iron Crown. You really don't know uh, what's going to happen. And the competitive market does play uh, a much bigger factor into the cost of cards than one would actually think. So it's very important to kind of pay attention, see what's going on on and then make a decision uh, that's best for you. So I hope you enjoy the content. If you did, please hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, it goes, I say it all the time, but it really does go a super long way uh, for the channel. Share the video if you wouldn't mind. That's the best way we can uh, make the fan clan grow even higher, bigger, and do more giveaways and give back even more. I love you guys. Thank you so much for everything. Seriously, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate you guys. We'll be back tomorrow with another video. Until next time, peace!